The Wild West has incredible storylines and characters that have enthralled fans for over a century. Almost as famous as the outlaws and lawmen are the weapons they used. You could write entire books on the guns that won the West, the Winchester Model 1873 and the Colt Single Action Army Revolver. But they weren't the only two weapons on the market. The American Industrial Revolution of 1870s brought huge new ideas to the weapons industry. This episode, we'll be covering firearms that don't fit into the Western lore. We'll be covering the weirdest weapons of the Wild West. Hello everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of Time, a channel that covers both well-known and obscure historical events. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, a comment, and please subscribe. It really does help the channel. Although some of these weapons are pretty weird in design, many of them paved the way to huge technological advances for American weaponry. First up, we have the harmonica gun. This was an early attempt at weapons with a high ammunition capacity. Since metal cartridges weren't in use yet, each shot was loaded with powder, primer, and projectile in its own housing, sometimes with up to 9 to 10 rounds. There are two main designs for the harmonica gun. One is where the magazine moves to a single barrel when fired. The other is where every shot has its own barrel. When self-contained ammunition hit the market, the harmonica gun became obsolete. It was also pretty awkward to conceal and store because the magazine was stuck out on each side. The famous first president of Texas, Sam Houston, had a harmonica gun, and it can be found in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. The harmonica gun actually made it to the big screen. Yul Brenner used one in his Spaghetti Western, Adios Sambata. The Lamat Revolver The Lamat Revolver, also known as the Grape Shot Revolver, was invented in New Orleans by John Alexander Lamat in 1856. When first looking at this revolver, it seems pretty normal, but it has a little secret that helps the user a little bit in close encounters. This revolver has a nine-shot cylinder that revolves around a separate center barrel that has one shot of a more powerful round, usually a 20-gauge. The person wielding this weapon could flip a switch on the hammer to access the bigger round. The Lamat was issued to the Confederate Army, but ran into issues with production during the Civil War. Only around 3,000 Lamat revolvers were produced between 1856 and 1865. The Derringer Just because we have a list of weird weapons doesn't mean that some of them aren't successful. The name Derringer really became a blanket word used in everyday language for a small gun. The original Derringer was a Philadelphia Derringer. Take note. There is different spelling between those two words. It was made by a man named Henry Derringer. The original was a muzzle-loaded cap lock single-shot pistol. Around 15,000 were manufactured of this early 1825 model. This firearm became a household name when John Wilkes Booth used a Derringer when he assassinated President Lincoln. Because of trademarking issues and copycats, the name was colloquially changed to Derringer with two R's. It was so successful that all pocket-sized guns were called Derringers, like all tissues are called Kleenex. The design went from the early muzzle-loaded pistol to pin-fire, rim-fire, and center-fire cartridges. This gun was popular with everyday citizens, but became extremely popular with gamblers and women of the night. Derringers are still being produced to this day. The Pepperbox Revolver The Pepperbox was really more popular right before the time period of the Old West. It was extremely popular in the 1830s and 1840s during the California Gold Rush because the gun could fire more than one shot without being reloaded. 
I researched all sorts of info for this weapon and came across a Mark Twain quote that sums it up perfectly. Quote, He wore in his belt an old original Allen revolver, such as irreverent people called a pepper box. Simply drawing the trigger back, cocked and fired the pistol. As the trigger came back, the hammer would begin to rise in the barrel to turn over, and presently, down would drop the hammer and away would speed the ball. To aim along the turning barrel and hit the thing aimed at was a feat which was probably never done with an Allen in the world. It was a cheerful weapon, the Allen. Sometimes all its six barrels would go off at once. And then there was no safe place in all the region roundabout, but behind it. End quote. The Revolving Rifle The Revolving Rifle was an early repeating rifle produced by the Colts Manufacturing Company from 1855 to 1864. Its design is very similar to the revolver pistols that we're all familiar with with the study of Wild West history. These rifles were popular because of the ever-present theme of the high rate of fire. The revolving rifle made an appearance in the Civil War, but was really used on the famous Pony Express. The weapon did have its downfalls. It had the advantage with its high rate of fire, but the weapon would take forever to load after its five or six shots were fired. During the Seminole Wars, the Seminole warriors figured this out and would rush the army's position after the first volley of shots. It was used even more by the Pony Express on the run between Independence, Missouri and Santa Fe, New Mexico. This dangerous run had eight men who guarded the Express, and according to the Missouri government, quote, these eight men are ready in case of an attack to discharge 136 shots without having to reload. We have no fears for the safety of the male. End quote. The Colt revolving rifle was also used by the famous Australian outlaw Ned Kelly during a fight with the Victoria Police in 1880. The volcanic pistol was known as a revolutionary weapon because it introduced the early stages of a lever action that is still used today. This lever action pistol used a bullet called a rocket ball cartridge. This bullet had a hollow cavity that contained a powder charge. The ammunition was waterproof, but lacked any real stopping power. The gun also didn't have a cleaning rod to clear misfired rounds out. Although the Volcanic Pistol wasn't a top seller, its original company broke into two of the most recognizable firearm companies in American history. Horace Smith and Daniel B. Wesson were partners that joined the company in 1854 and began gathering investors. They broke off and started their own firearms company, Smith & Wesson. Who took over the Volcanic Arms Company after Smith & Wesson left? One of their investors. Oliver Winchester. After reorganizing the company a few times, Oliver Winchester changed the name to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, and the most famous gun in the Wild West was born, the lever-action Winchester rifle. The Evans Repeating Rifle The Evans Repeating Rifle may look like a normal firearm from the time period at first glance, but its design makes it one of the most unusual weapons of the Wild West. The Evans Repeater was actually designed by a dentist from Maine named Warren R. Evans. Along with his brother George, they started the Evans Rifle Manufacturing Company in hopes to land the ever-elusive government contract for the U.S. Army. Instead of typical methods of feeding ammunition into the gun, the Evans Repeater held up to 28 rounds in the buttstock of the gun. The rounds were then fed into the breech by rotating the ammunition in. The ammo capacity for the Evans was actually the largest capacity for any mass-produced rifle in the 19th century. Unfortunately for the company, the Evans repeater failed to hold up in the dusty climates and was deemed unreliable by the U.S. government, thus bankrupting the company. Thank you for watching Chronicles of Time. If you like what we're doing here, Leave a like, a comment, and please subscribe. It really does help the channel. Thank you all again for the suggestions. Please keep them coming. We'll see you on the next one.
Cheers, y'all.